These six cities of refuge are beautiful pictures of Jesus Christ. Let me show you why. Number one, if you look at verse 7 of chapter 20, who is appointing these cities? Is this something that the Jewish Federation thought up? Is this something that, that is on Joshua's resume, that he's this insightful leader, visionary? No, no. God appointed these cities. That's, that's the first truth. God himself appointed the cities of refuge. That means it's an act of grace for all are sinners and all deserve to die. Moses didn't choose these cities because that reminds us the law can never save anyone. It wasn't an earthly priest that thought this system up to show us that no religion can save us. It's an act of grace. God invented this. God invented salvation. The second thing is, where do you find the cities of refuge? In the word of God. God invented them and then he announces them in his word. A wonderful truth to think about. These six cities are named by Joshua and they could never be changed. On the authority of the word of God, a slayer would enter the city that God named. Not any city, the one God picked. You see, God not only invented this, he specified exactly how it was to occur. That's another problem we have nowadays. In, as I said last Sunday morning, in America and around the world, we have people designing new plans of salvation. I mean, there's even one in our city. And he's even written a book about it, saying that that it's God is not a Christian. The idea that there are many ways to God. That's called universalism, and it's also one of Satan's favorite lies. God announced this. God appointed what city you had to go to. And then what I love is, the the line I pointed out to you, that, that these cities were supposed to be accessible to all, even the strangers. Thirdly, anyone could access these cities of refuge. Now, let me give you a little history about them before I uh, apply it, okay? It, it says in the scripture in other places, these cities are also mentioned in Deuteronomy 19, that these cities were easy to reach from anywhere in the country. If you read what it says in in Deuteronomy, it talks about placing them within reach. If you look on a map of the Holy Land, you'll find that these cities were arranged so that no one was too far away from them. So the first thing about a city of refuge was it was easy to get to. It might be in a mountain, but there was clearly a road going up to it. It might be on a plain, but it was clearly on a main road where you could find it. It was easy to reach if it was a city of refuge. From Jewish literature, uh, these cities, there's a little more. The Bible doesn't specify what happened. But when you read the the commentaries that the Jewish rabbis wrote, it's fascinating. I'll read you from one of them. Uh, These cities were carefully uh, uh, on highways. They had to be repaired. There was Jewish law that every spring after the rains and bad weather of winter was over, that the roads had to be repaired so that someone would not have any trouble night or day following the road to the city. Bridges were built when needed so that the people did not have to run down into a ravine. You understand, if if they're running behind you and you go down, they could get you down at the bottom or on the way back up and make you fall and throw a rock at you. And so the, the law mandated that they make bridges. Whenever you were crossing a stream to a city of refuge, you had to have a bridge so that you could make a straight shot and and not have to do one of these things and be endangered. They were easy to reach. At every crossroads, a special sign had to be put up. In fact, the Jewish uh, um, writings say that that this word in Hebrews 6.18, refuge, was printed out and it said it had to be easily readable to someone running. And so they put up a billboard and pointed at every crossroads they would have this sign placed showing where the city of refuge was and the bridge had to be repaired and the road had to be repaired also they appointed uh, and was paid for by the the jewish taxation system runners who learned the law of god they were stationed to guide the fugitive to the place of safety so they were employed people who would be on the outskirts of town, and all their job was is to go like this and scan the roads. And if you saw someone running and a crowd behind them, you were supposed to run to them and guide them safely into the city of refuge. So you can imagine a man coming up the road, another man is pursuing him with his sword out. The first man, having no time to use a magnifying glass, approaches a sign and sees big words, refuge. And it points to where he's supposed to go. Second truth about these cities. Number one is they had to be easy to reach. Second truth about them was they were open to all. Look at verse 9 again. That whosoever killed a person. 
Now, I think even by my pause, you can catch that, that this is a, a beautiful time to remember another verse that says that whosoever. Right? What's the most well-known verse in all the Bible? John 3.16. Yeah. That whosoever believeth in him will not perish. Look again at, at, at chapter 20 and verse 9 of Joshua. That whosoever killed a person can find refuge. It's a wonderful reminder, for God so loved the world. It kind of sounds like the, that whosoever from John 3.16. These cities of refuge were secondly open to all. Easy to access. Secondly, open to all. Third thing about them, from non-biblical sources, we know that the great doors of these cities were always left open. The giant gates at the entrance ways, the, the roads that came into the city, the giant gates were always propped open. They never closed them for any reason. They always were propped open. They were never locked. They were never closed. And we can see why. A person might die beating on the door. Can you imagine? Bam! Bam! And finally, up behind you comes that, you know, uncle or cousin with their sword in hand. They go, gotcha. While you're banging on the gate, say, let me in, let me in. So the doors were never closed. They were never locked. The fourth truth they were easily accessible, open to all. They were always open and never locked. Fourthly, uh, the sources tell us that each city of refuge was stocked with food. Uh, they, were, they were always a completely sufficient refuge. You see, they didn't just give legal protection and then you'd starve to death or die of thirst. They were a complete... The, the entire city was made to provide a haven for people who were fleeing for their lives. And so there was legal protection, there was food, there was water, there were provisions to last you as long as you had to live there to be safe. It was a completely sufficient refuge. Once inside, a person's needs were met. The cities of refuge were completely adequate for the needs of the endangered one. As long as the slayer remained in the city, he was safe. He was fed. He was protected. He was provided for. So they were easy to reach. You know, they were always visible and pointed. They were, the doors were never locked. Uh, these, these cities were completely providing everything that was needed. They were, they were visible and, and open, and anyone could come to them. The, the, the invitation was just wide open for everyone. One last truth, the last thing about them. We know from the Bible, of course, that if a killer chose to not flee to a city of refuge, there was no other hope. If they said, ah, I don't believe in that archaic system, I'm just going to stay here. They could be cut down and killed in vengeance by the relatives. Because the provision of the law was, if the person did not avail themselves of the city of refuge, they could be killed. So if you didn't choose to do what God's word announced, what God thought up, and what God said you were supposed to do, you didn't have any other choice. You would be killed by the avengers. And so the slayer is told to flee to the city, and such a person could not afford to delay. So those, there's a history lesson, okay? Cities of refuge.